Hi there and welcome to this episode of Consciousness Fucking Empowerment. Here we talk about consciousness, the law of attraction, and how to reach your fucking dreams. All right. Now, if you're new here, welcome. I know I've, re I've received a few new subscribers. Welcome. So a little bit about me. I went to prison at 18. I did not have a high school education. My parents didn't go to college. They, they're actually immigrants from Mexico. I was born in Mexico. They brought me over when I was three years old. Now, I, I came to the realization that my imagination created reality because I seamlessly went to community college was accepted to a top tier university, University of, of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and graduated twice from there with a BA and a master's degree. Now, people would always ask, people would always ask, man, how'd you do it, man? Like, hey man, congrats, how'd you do it? You know, how'd you like stay motivated and things like that? You know, how'd you pay for it? And honestly, I could not really tell them. I was like, I don't know, man, I just, I just asked, but for two years while I was incarcerated, I visualized being on a college campus. And not only that, I had positive feelings that I was successful, that I was having fun, that I was having a joyful experience because I was in prison. So it was not what we would say an ideal experience. So we're very inculcated in there that, oh, you did something bad, you're in a bad place, which is pretty true. It's pretty true, it's not wrong. But at the same time, I also had lessons there, life lessons there that we are all doing time right now, wherever you are, especially if you don't like where you're at right now, you're a prisoner of your own creation. And sometimes we don't like it, but we stay in it because we're comfortable. It's kind of like the frog that gets boiled in the water when um, they just turn up the heat. That's just an analogy. I hope nobody's ever done that shit. That's fucked up. Um, and then... Um, the, the frog, they say the frog just stays in the boiling water because it, it's, it slightly goes up, right? But if you put the, the frog in the boiling water, it just jumps out, right? So that's what happened to me. And I think a lot of people who have goals are people are like the frog who are boiling in water, but the water starts boiling ever so slightly, right? And the temperature increases ever so slightly. My ass was thrown into the boiling water. I'm like, hell no, I don't want to be a bad person because I'm going to end up be being incarcerated or even dying because this is a violent place. <clears throat> but at the same time, I learned how to live life, how to change my mindset and just have fun at that time, right? And then when I got out, the bad thing about it was that I realized that, oh, okay, I'm out. I should be happy now. I should be as free, but happiness is earned. It's not, you don't wake up, you open your eyes and, okay, I'm happy. No, it doesn't happen. Everybody wakes up groggy, slow, low energy. Low energy is low vibration, unfortunately. Or fortunately, it's because you're, you've been you've been stiff or not stiff, but like not moving. All right, you've been immobile, so your body's gonna slow down, right? As you as you wake up, your body's gonna be slow, and you need to switch that by, you know, you one. Physically doing physical activity, right? Every morning I'm, I move. I exercise or I move. I walk around, right? I walk. Gratitude. Changing your perspective from, oh, why I got to get up? I don't like moving my body to, I'm grateful for my body, okay? And meditation to control your mind. To be calm all, at all times. Nothing is going to push you around mentally nor physically, all right? So... <clears throat> I'm going to go over Neville Goddard, okay, and his book, The Power of Awareness, Chapter 5, The Truth That Sets You Free, okay, Truth That Sets You Free. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with the quote so we, we can summarize this um, chapter, all right, I'm going to go over a few quotes, but before we move forward, right now. You must be aiming and visualizing for the highest version of yourself. 
If you have like an idea of like, oh, I want this because I don't think I could get that, then this isn't for you. That's not your highest version of yourself. Okay. I want you to achieve the highest version of yourself. That means the one with no limits. Okay. If you want, if you would like a mansion instead of a one story home, aim for the mansion. If you would want a Mercedes Maybach instead of the, um, the Honda Accord, aim for the Maybach. All right. If you still have those limiting beliefs, then this isn't for you. Don't watch this. Okay. Now, second, be ready to learn and apply because you can learn this. And if you don't apply it, it's not going to do you any good. Okay. It's not going to do you any good. All right. So now that you've made the choice to one, be the highest version of yourself. Be and become the highest version of yourself. And you decided that you're ready to learn. So let's get started. Okay. <clears throat> Quote from chapter five, the truth that sets you free. It cannot be emphasized too much that by creating an ideal within your mental sphere, by assuming that you are already that ideal, you identify yourself with it and thereby transform yourself into its image thinking from the ideal instead of thinking of the ideal every state is already there as mere possibilities as long as we think of them but as overpoweringly real when we think from them right now when i have said you're aiming to the highest version of yourself. That's thinking of the goal. That's thinking of the goal. When you visualize and you experience it in your mind like a simulation, you can see your hands. You look at your hands in your mind, right? Right now, you're, for example, you're probably sitting down right now or whatever you're doing. You know, maybe you're on the treadmill right now. For one second, close your eyes so you ignore the senses. For one second, close your eyes, then visualize doing something opposite of what you're doing. If I'm sitting down, I'm gonna close my eyes, I'm walking outside, you know, and the sun's hitting my, my skin. Boom, I was experiencing it. I was thinking from my imagination, not thinking of something intellectually, okay? That's the difference. So if you're walking, imagine yourself laying down on your bed, you know? If you're laying down on your bed, imagine yourself walking. Okay. From the first person point of view. Okay. First person point of view. So that's kind of like when you see a video game, if the old school, like video games, like, um, 007, where they have the gun, you don't see your face. You just see the gun. And you see the hands and then they're moving. <sighs> that's how you got to see it. Okay. And feel it, feel the senses in your imagination. Okay. That's what Neville Goddard is talking about in that quote. Now, I'm going to give you another quote. What greater gifts could be given you than to be told the truth that will set you free? John 8, 32. And then Neville Goddard follows up explaining why he put that quote. Quote, the truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in imagination, your desire will become an actuality. End quote. This is why so many people who have done time, and been, who have been incarcerated or have done military time or somewhere where they're like forced to be at a certain place and they cannot move, so they're essentially enslaved to their circumstance, whether they did it consciously or unconsciously. People who are incarcerated mostly unconsciously, because who the hell wants to do that, right? And who know who would consciously know that their thoughts and their, and their actions will create a certain reality, will take them there. Like nobody wants that. People want more life, more joy, more more wonderful experiences. Okay, that one is not that joyful or wonderful. Okay, unless they were taught wrong. 
the product of the environment. So I understand that. That's what was that was me. I, when I was young, I knew that being in a in a gang or a tag banging crew, like that's what I was in. I was in a tag banging crew. I knew it was wrong. The shit that we were doing, breaking the laws, you know, hurting other people. But then we become a part of a product of our environment. Everybody's doing it. So I want to be like everybody. I want to be cool. I want to be like that. You know, I don't want to be an outcast. Right? So I understand that shit. Okay. But we learn, we become wise. If you're young, and you know, you're a kid and you're watching this shit. Learn from me. If you think and do bad things, that will come back to you. Versus if you do, if you think and do good things, good things will come to you. Like donating, volunteering, giving people compliments, asking people how their day was, being kind. It all comes back to you. Positively. And no regard in this chapter talks about investing your time. So the only thing that you have is your present moment is time, essentially. But in this physical realm, okay? You want to invest it by being a kind and loving person. That's how you are, you are investing every second, every moment. And then when you're visualizing, you invest that moment into feeling the wish fulfilled or feeling the wish realized. And like he mentioned, it will manifest. It will materialize in your physical world. <clears throat> I'm going to read it again. Quote, the truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in imagination, your desire will become an actuality. It says a physical actuality. He means in a, a physical actuality. When I was in prison, I would have visualized that. I was on campus feeling the sun, seeing the sky, seeing the buildings. Okay, in my imagination, it felt so real. And I was so happy, right? Because it was a real thing in my imagination. While my body was laying down on my top bunk in Southern California, in Blythe, California, in prison. That was where my physical body was at. But my consciousness was visualizing that moment. And then it became an actuality. So now I'm going to re read these last couple of quotes to explain what I meant by the investing. All right. Everything must be an investment in your life. It must provide. It must give okay, to the world and you. Okay, Because if you give yourself more, you're giving to the world as well. Quote, when you can call up at will what, whatever, whatsoever image you please, when the forms of your imagination are as vivid to you as the forms of nature, you are master of your fate. You must stop spending your thoughts, your time, and your money. Everything in life must be an investment. You must stop spending your thoughts, time, and money. Everything in life must be an investment. Okay, I, I, I highlighted that twice because it's very important. Whenever we assume the feeling of being what we want to be, we are investing. So I'm going to go over the, the definition of spending. To spend is to waste, to squander, to lay out without return. To invest is to lay out for a purpose from which a profit is expected. This revelation of my wife is about the importance of the moment. It is about the transformation of the moment. It is only what is done now that counts. It is only what is done now that counts. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You want to do things that will benefit you though you'll get a positive return on it and the paradox here is that when you give to others you give money not expecting anything in return from the person that you give to or the compliment you give to or the kindness you you give the universe builds a credit for you you can call it karma i call it a credit you call it an investment and you receive it you receive back so when you ask you visualize you'll get it it's a paradox for you to get, you must give. So understand this 
law of the universe. Understand this law of the universe. If you give, you will get. What you put out is what you get in return. So you're giving out goodness. You're going to get back goodness. And then be, and make it more specific. You give money, you're going to get back money. And I want to share this tip that I learned. If you're overspending and you kind of like, okay, man, I, I, I don't want to overspend. I'm getting to the point of overspending and just like getting fulfillment from spending. Right? Instead of, you know, your internal validation, give to others. Because when you give, you become content. You become fulfilled. It's like when you go out and you volunteer your time, you become fulfilled. Okay? You become fulfilled. It's an odd paradox. When we give to others, we become full. Now, Neville Goddard here specifically says, when you invest your time and feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, re-quote it. Whenever we assume the feeling of being what we want to be, we are investing. So we are investing the moment. That's all we need. That's how everything we want is free. Now, where did I hear it? I think I heard it from the book Unstoppable Self-Confidence. I think, but... but if it's not then, but it's still it's still a great fucking concept that we choose our goal and then our goal makes our life. That's how it is. Everything is free. We choose our wish, right? We choose our ideal, our goal. Your dream, once you make it a goal and you make plans... It's no longer a dream, it's a goal. But it started as a dream, as a thought, right? So you make your dream, decide to make it, you commit to it, now it's a goal, you make a plan, and so then your goal creates your life, right? You choose your goal, you choose your dream, and then your dream makes your life through the plans and actions that you have to do to, to do that. But that's when you choose your life and you have the complete autonomy of your life because you choose it with no limits. I love you. I hope you like this one. If this is resonating, share this with somebody you care about. Share this with somebody who knows Neville Goddard. Share this with somebody you really love. All right. Until next time, make sure to like comment and subscribe i love you peace